program Brother Parker's given me. I'm supposed to have done this last night, but here I am. It says, every Christian coming to recognize and understand by faith the fact that there is an enemy learning and maturing in order not to be ignorant of Satan's devices in order to fight the real enemy. I have said many times in this pulpit, I'm not the enemy and neither are you. But there is an enemy. I'd like to show you something that Jesus did for us the night that he instituted the Lord's Supper on the sixth day that he did everything to make things right. It goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 3 when the Lord came in the cool of the day walking. And he came looking for his creation, Adam, and he asked, where are you, Adam? Where are you? And Adam came out from some bushes. He said, why are you there? And he said, I was afraid because I was naked. And God said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded that you not eat from? And Adam said, this woman that you gave to me to be with me, she gave me the fruit and I did eat. God turned to the woman and said, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I did eat. And God turned to the serpent and said, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than all the beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go forth and eat dust all the day of your life. And I will put enmity between your seed and the woman's seed and I will put enmity between your seed and the woman's seed. Keep that in your mind. And he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. And then God proceeded to give out curses. He gave one to Eve, he gave one to Adam, and he certainly had just given one to the serpent. He said to Adam, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of, cursed, keep this in mind, church, yes, is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and dust you shall return. The day Messiah died was the sixth day. The sixth day was the day of man, the day that he was created. And the sixth day began at sunset on Thursday, Thursday night before the crucifixion. But in Hebrew, the word for man is Adam. So it could be said that he had to die on the day of Adam. Isn't it interesting that 1 Corinthians 15, 22 said, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. And also in 1 Corinthians 15, and so it is written, the first Adam became a living being, the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. There were signs linked to Adam that night before the crucifixion. When the sixth day began, on the day that Adam fell, it was said, you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. Adam would toil to eat bread and then die in the curse. 
Bread is linked to death. Now remember how the sixth day began. The night before Messiah's death, he began at sundown with the starting of the Last Supper. The Last Supper was the feast of bread, unleavened bread. You shall eat bread, is what God had said. So as the night of Adam began, Messiah ate bread, and he ate bread in the face of death. When he lifted up the bread at the Last Supper, he did so to join it to his death. As in the curse of Adam, the bread was joined to death. After the meal, ultimately they went out to Gethsemane, a compound word which means oil press, because there they pressed olives for their oil. Was this any link to Adam? Let's see. It was in Gethsemane that Messiah toiled in prayer and sweated what appeared to be drops of blood falling to the ground. Toil, sweat, and ground. All three appear in the curse of Adam. And where did the curse begin? In the garden. And where was Messiah on the night of Adam? In Gethsemane. And what is Gethsemane? A garden. And what happened to Adam because of the fall? He was removed from the garden to the place outside the garden, the place of the curse, and ultimately to his death. And on that night, Messiah was removed from the garden when they arrested him and taken to a place where the curse of Adam would fall upon him, where he would be judged, cursed, for cursed is he who hangeth upon a tree and taken to his death. And it began on the night of Adam. What is the conclusion with all this? This was done so the children of Adam could be redeemed from the toil of their lives. That's us. And leave the curse and come back to the blessings in the presence of God. Messiah took himself the curse of man. He took it upon him. By the power of his redemption, you and I should live now against and all uh, beyond all curses and be grateful for the blessing he has given. The next time you're in communion, think about all the way back to the garden. Because when Jesus was going to the cross, he was making all things new. Not only for everybody that's been on earth since that day, but for you too. That's the reason we proskuneo, we kiss God when we worship him. For we love and adore his greatness and the wonders that he has given to us. There's so many things for us to see about what he's done for us. Christianity and worship is more than a ritual. It is an intimate relationship with God himself. For God is love and he requires that we love him. And this is something that we're missing because of one thing, the enemy. Did you notice what Adam did when God questioned him? He blamed Eve. Did you notice what Eve did when God questioned her? He blamed the serpent. The serpent was used by the enemy, but then the serpent uses all of us. This is the reason our fellowship is challenged. We really don't understand what's going on. That's the reason we take issue with each other, rather than recognizing the issue is the serpent is still active. He's deceiving us, causing us to be at odds with each other, fighting among each other, hurting each other, seeking to destroy each other, even holding vengeance against each other, when all it is is the work of the enemy to seek to divide God's house, and if he can divide it, he'll destroy it. And why do we participate in it so much? Because we don't love him enough. We're still in love with self. That's why Jesus said, deny self. Take up your cross and follow me daily. I can work with you when you deny self. But as long as you're selfish, you hold vengeance, you hold attitude, 
and you hurt people. You accuse people because you're working for him when you don't know how to love because God is love and God loves us in spite of us. And he tells me to love you in spite of you. Look here, I know I mess up. Then love me back in line. Help me learn how to, as they say, color inside the lines. What I'm saying is sometimes we color outside the lines. I wasn't always good with coloring books. You may have been. Sometimes I made mistakes. When I'm in traffic, sometimes I find myself out of my lane. I do that every now and then. Sometimes I may get out of my lane with you. I don't even know what's going on with you and get in trouble with you. But if you don't know how to love me like God loves me, we may never speak again. You got to learn to love me like God loves me. And I got to learn to love you like God loves me. When we learn that church, we're on our way somewhere. Let me show you how they saw fellowship. Can I show you that? Fellowship. We think of it as two men in a boat rowing in the same direction. That's our illustration. Two men in a boat rowing in the same direction. In the first century, they saw fellowship in the same fashion that they saw conjoined twins. Siamese twins joined together at the hip or at the head or some part of their body. They were one. Two were one. If one died, the other died. If one was sick, the other was sick. If one was harmed, the other was harmed. That's the way they saw fellowship. We made segregation into fellowship. You, you, and I, me. We're playing ISO Christianity. Every man for himself. Even though the Lord in love said, bear one another's burdens. Bear one another's burdens. And do what? So fulfill what? The law of Christ. We forget that when we get mad at each other because we don't love enough. Love's the issue. We need to learn how to love. I mean love, not lust. We got that down pat. We can hang with some emotions, all right? I'm talking about love with the will. I am determined I'm going to love Eddie Dunlap. That's my will. I do that. I make that decision. I control that. That's agape. You say, well, you don't know what he's going to do. I have no idea. God knows me, and he loves me, and he knows what I'm going to do. Let me show you something. Philip was asked by Jesus when 5,000 people were sitting out there hungry, what shall we do with them? He said, send them home. Jesus said, he said this to test it. He says, set him down. But Jesus was testing Philip because he knew what Peter, Philip would say. He knew Philip put all of his confidence in money. Yeah. Let me tell you what. Money is not the issue here, church. Your soul's worth more than money. But sometimes we let money get in the way. This man was thinking inside of what he understood. He understood money to not be enough to feed all them people. But then Jesus came out with a love thing and fed everybody. He didn't send nobody home. And let me share with y'all something. Everybody out there wasn't good folk. Ain't no way in the world you're going to tell me all them people were law-abiding citizens. They were out there after a fish sandwich. They were out there after a blessing. They were out there after a healing. They were out there after something. They didn't know what Jesus was going to do. Are you following this? There was a whole lot of folk out there that were straight up rascals, maybe even criminals. And Jesus fed every one of them. We've got to get out of judging each other wrongly. Because with the same judgment you use, it's going to be used on you. Keep that in mind. So when you get before the judgment bar and you ain't had no mercy in your judgment, don't look for none. Because the reality is God already warned you, you're going to reap what you sow. Are y'all following this? The church needs to get together. Now I'm talking to preachers now. Can I talk to preachers? Y'all have a purpose and God gave it to you to exercise this love and teach us how to love. And you got to love. 
I need somebody to read for me. I love people to read because we need to get back to the word. We need to stay in the word. Why? Because I believe James said the engrafted word is able to save our souls. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 4, starting verse 11. I hope everybody bought their Bible. Even if it's on a cell phone, look at it. Because we need to see it for ourselves. You need to let God talk to you. See, God is talking to you. He's not talking to your neighbor. Sometimes people say amen because they amen and because somebody says something from the pulpit about somebody else's sin. But God is talking about everybody here. He is directing this message to you and to me. And I'm speaking the thing. But he's talking to all of us. Ain't no, I'm talking just to Brother Wash McCall. No, Terry's in this message too. And the rest of y'all, get it in your head. Preach. The message is to you. Yeah. Preach. Stop looking around saying, well, they got Brother Martin this time. Preach. Preach it, brother. <laughs> Drop another load on him. Hit him, hit him, hit him. <laughs> say it, say it, say it. <laughs> well, when you think like that, go ahead, my brother, read for me. And he please. gave some apostles. And some, some apostles. Prophets. Go ahead. He gave some apostles, some prophets, whatever. Some evangelists. Some evangelists. Some pastors. Some and pastors teachers. and teachers. For what? For the perfecting of the saints. Watch that word. It's the root to teleos. I showed you that the other night from Matthew yes, 5.48. That means perfection. God said, I want you to be perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. I want you to be like my Father. I want you to be like God. Yeah. God is love. And you can perfect in love. You can learn how to love people that are not lovable. You can do that. Or God would not have asked you to do it. Preach. God don't ask you nothing you can't do. Now you may say I can't do it, but that's you saying that. God knows you. He built you. Yeah. Oh. That's the reason people tell me sometimes, I can't understand the Bible. Don't tell me that. God's talking to you. I know you can understand the Bible. You know how I know it. You see this thing right here. Preach. Ain't hardly. Nobody in here ain't got one. Preach. It's supposed to be a phone. But it's got a weather program on here. It's got a Bible on here. It's got a calculator on here. It's got internet on here. Just to name a few things. I even got a gallery of pictures on here. I got a camera on here. And I can work this thing. And you can too. I don't care what level of school you in. Five year olds got this. And you can't. Great. Great. But you can't understand God. You don't want to understand God. You can understand him. Let me show. Oh, I got to show you this. Hold on right there. Brother, I want you to go with me to the book of Man, uh, John, uh, chapter 4. Because, see, I want to share with you verbus diablos, the language of the devil. You can understand him, but you can't understand God. God's people couldn't even understand God, but they can understand the devil. You remember there where Jesus, in John chapter 8, verse 31, 32, where he said, uh, if you will continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And what did they come back with? Well, wait a minute now. We're Abraham's seed. Right. We've never been in bondage to nobody. That's where I want you to start it. And I want you all to hear what he says here before I go back to Ephesians. Okay. Go ahead, my brother. They answered him. Go ahead. We be Abraham's seed. We be Abraham's seed. And we're never in bondage to any man. We were never in bondage to anybody. How sayest thou ye shall be made free? How in the world are you saying we're going to be made free? We're Abraham's seed. Go ahead. Jesus answered them. Just like we're the church of Christ. Go verily, ahead. verily, I say unto you. What's that? Verily, verily, I say unto truly, you. Truly, truly, I say unto you. Whosoever committed sin who, is. Whosoever the, committed sin is slave to sin. Go ahead. Is the servant of sin. Go ahead. And the servant abideth not in the house forever. Go ahead. But the son abideth forever. And if the son. And if the son, I'm sorry, if the son, therefore, shall make you free, then you shall you be free indeed. Keep reading. I know that you are Abraham's seed. I know you are Abraham's seed. I know you know the word. Because you're God's children. Go ahead. But you seek to kill me. you fixing to kill me. Because my word me. hath no place in you. What has no place in you? My word hath no place in you. It's not that you can't understand it. It can't find no place. Watch this. God is not only love, he's light. Preach. In him is no darkness at all. Preach. When John said, when God abides in you, you cannot sin, it's because darkness and light cannot cohabitate. That's right. That's right. If God's there, sin don't happen. That's right. If God ain't there, anything's going to happen. That's right. Are y'all following? 
The only reason he can't get to your ear because you're listening to the enemy. Amen. Watch what he says about this enemy. Go ahead. I speak that which I have seen with my father. I speak that which I have seen with my father. And you do. And you do what? That which you have seen with your father. You listening to the enemy. Jesus is saying that. Now notice, Jesus is the truth. Truth is singular in the, in the Bible. Everything else is a mistruth. You follow this? Now Jesus is telling the truth. He said, you listening to your father. Go ahead. They answered and said unto him, what? Abraham is our father. Uh huh. Go ahead. Jesus said unto him, If, 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 if you Abraham were Abraham's children, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. And do what? But now you seek to kill me. You want to kill me? A man that hath told you the truth. All I did was tell you the truth. Which I heard of God. Which God love gave me. This did not Abraham. This did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. Whose father? You do the father. deeds of your father. But they just claimed Abraham. Go ahead. Then they said unto him, we be not born of fornication. Now they're trying to insult him, saying you don't even know who your daddy is. That's yeah. exactly what they just Absolutely. said. Absolutely. Do you know how Jesus just right. taught me something? Uh, my brothers, don't pay this kind of foolishness no attention. He didn't even drop it. He just kept on going with what he was talking about. He did not answer this foolish statement. He knew who his father was. They didn't know who he was. And they claimed to know who his father was because they claimed to be God's children and didn't even know God. But they mad at Jesus now and said, you, you're born of fornication. You don't even know who your dad is. That's an insult. Jesus did not even bother with that. He just kept right on going. And you need to learn how to do that too. Amen. When somebody says something stupid, just pay them no man. Just go on back to business. Amen. Yes, sir. Leave Amen. them with that. Pray for them. That's Pray right. For them. Pray. All right, pray for him. Keep going, brother. We have one father, even God. We have, listen to them. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them. Yes. If God were your father. If God were your father. Watch you, what's coming. You would love me. You would do what? You would love me. You would what? You would love me. If God was your father, you would what? Love me. This is the same people want to kill him. Yeah. If God were your father, you'd love me too. Yeah. Are you hearing what he's saying? This is to us. This ain't no archaic statement. He's trying to tell us something. If God's your father, you'll love each other. Yes. If God's your father, you'll love each other. Amen. If God's your father, you'll love each other. Amen. But if he's not, keep going. For I proceeded forth and came from, from God. Keep going. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Go ahead. Why do you not understand my Look speech? At Look at this. Verbos Diablo, go ahead. Why do you not understand my speech? Why don't you understand what I'm saying? Sir? Even Please because you cannot hear my word. What did he say? Even because you cannot hear my word. You can't even hear me? Because you're listening to the enemy. Keep going. You are your father. You are of your father. And the lust of your father you the will do. The lust of your father you want to do. He, you he, want to please him. You want to hurt somebody because you ain't, you ain't happy. Yes. Unhappy people like to do unhappy things. Amen. Yes, sir. That's right. God's trying to give you joy and you ain't even happy. Amen. Something is wrong with that picture. You yes. need to repent. Yes. I said that Sunday, didn't I? Yes, sir. I ain't taking it back. Yeah. The church needs to repent. That's right. We need to grow in some areas. Repentance don't just take you into the baptism. It's something you do all your life. It's ongoing, absolutely. That's how you That's grow. Right. You repent out of one bad episode in your life and go to a higher level. But you got to change. That's what That's repentance right. means. Amen. Yes, sir. Somebody ain't never moved from the time they got out of the baptistry is in trouble with God. Yes, sir. Amen. Because they're listening to the devil. Because God said, the work he that believeth in me, the works that I do, he shall do also. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. He said, the very thing I'm doing, you'll do also. What did he do? He loved folk. Preach. You don't have to raise nobody from the dead. Just love somebody. Preach. Amen. Start in the church. You don't have to give nobody blind eyes back. Just love somebody. Amen. 
Learn how to get outside of yourself and stop being selfish and learn how to give because love always gives. Amen. Always gives. Jesus said, I came not to be ministered to, but to minister. I came to serve. I came to help you. Yes. 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 Are you hearing this? I came to help you. Don't let the enemy take away your help. Amen. Amen, brother. Why is it you do not understand my speech? It is because you are of your father, the devil. Yes. That is not just to them folk right there. Remember, these passages are old, but they're talking to you. They're talking to me. You're in that passage. You're one of those people. I don't know which one, but you're one of them. <laughs> because Jesus is dealing with folk. He's dealing with people. He's trying to get the message to us. The word is to be preached in season and out of season. Why? He's trying to tell us something. And it's senseless for us to be thinking he's just talking to other folk. That's the danger right there. He's not talking to me. Now who he think he is, God. Now you don't accuse me. What is that about? Why do you want to insult like that? What's wrong? Because you're unhappy. Right. Unhappy people say unhappy things. See, you're telling on yourself. Yeah, you are. Right. Here's another thing to tell off on you. You get happy when something bad happens to somebody. Love don't do that. You hold on to Ephesians over there. I'll be back in a day or so, but you just hold on to Ephesians. Let me go over here uh, uh, with 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Let's go down to verse number 4. Love don't do that. But when people, something bad happened to them, Brother McCall, they are, uh -huh, they got exactly what's coming to them. They come up in here. I'm glad it happened. Maybe now they'll learn something. Rejoicing in somebody else's misery ain't an act of love. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. That happens. I'm glad it happened to them. That's what they get for doing bad. <laughs> That's what they get. What do you get? <laughs> now watch. Watch what, watch what love is. Read this, brother. Start with verse 4. Charity suffered long. Number one, charity suffers long because that's a characteristic of God. The Bible says in 1 Peter, I think it is 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 21, I thank God, is, or 221, it said, For unto this you were called, that Christ suffered, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. Yes, Suffering's a part of the program because in suffering, that's where you learn. That's right. If I had time to talk to you about the midbar, which is the wilderness in the Hebrew language, you'd find out the midbar or the wilderness is the holy place. Yeah. That's where you really learn God when you're alone with him and there ain't nothing to distract you. It was in the midbar that God spoke to Moses and on this ground, take off your shoes because it's holy. It was in the midbar that God spoke to Elijah because he was speaking to him in a still small voice in the wilderness. It was in the midbar when Jesus was spoken to for 40 days and 40 nights in his fasting and the devil was tempting him while he was out there. The midbar is the place of holiness and suffering. It purges you yeah. of all iniquity. Yes, sir. Because there ain't nothing to distract you. You listen to him and him alone. Amen. Keep reading. Suffering. Go ahead. Suffereth long this kind. It's kind. Charity envieth not. Uh oh. Doesn't envy. I don't want what you got. Oh, I do want what you got. Why don't I just go to get a job and get my own? Amen. That would be better than me being mad at you for working hard to get what you got. God blessed you to have it. That's you and God's business. He blessed you to have it. God blessed you to have it. God blessed you to have it. You to have it. Amen. I ain't got no business saying, what you doing with it? God blessed you to have it. After you've been working 40 years, you ought to have something. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Now, who am I to argue with you about your blessing, saying, what is he doing with that? You've been working all your life. You ought to have something to show that you have prospered. Amen. And I ain't got no business envying you because you worked hard. Amen. But when the enemy's in your ear, that's right. you might be out there. Great. 
Yes. Stay with me just a moment longer. Go ahead. Vaunted not itself. It's not arrogant. It's, it's not, not puffed up. It doesn't act like it's better than the rest of the folk. Yes. Like everybody else should polish my shoes as soon as I walk through the place. Preach. When I walk in, move. Preach. Yeah. When I move, you move. <laughs> if I'm walking toward you, get out of the way. Are y'all following this? Yes. Arrogance ought not be in the church. Yes. Ain't nothing wrong with holding the door for somebody. Amen. Ain't no, nothing wrong with letting somebody go through the door first. Preach. In the old country, the South is called manners. Yeah. Preach. Preach. <laughs> That's what it is, is manners. Preach. Ain't nothing wrong with having manners. Jesus is trying to teach us, have some manners. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, my brother. Does not, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Does not behave itself unseemly. Doesn't do what? Behave itself unseemly. That means rude. Seek not, not her own. Wait a minute, let's stop right there. Does not behave itself unseemly. Doesn't act out. Doesn't have panic attacks in the Preach. pews. Well, the preacher got to go get some holy water and splash on you. <laughs> Trying to put you out. Yeah. You done got mad at somebody and you coming out saying, I'm coming out of retirement for a minute. Yeah. You're forcing my hand. Yeah. You better run. That's when they got to throw some holy water on you and go get a crucifix or something. Because the devil has shown up, got a hold to you. Yes, the sir. devil don't act like that. One of those cases where it says, I'm giving you a piece of my mind. Haven't you noticed we need to keep all we got? That's right. <laughs> Haven't you noticed that? It'll leave you by itself. Yes. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to give it away. It'll leave you. Yes. Keep on walking down the journey. It will leave you. Stop trying to give it away because it'll leave on its own. That's right. Go ahead, my brother. Seeketh not her own. Seeketh not her own. She's not selfish. Go ahead. Is not easily provoked. Not easily provoked. Preach. Some people you can't even speak to. Yes. Preach. Without them thinking something's wrong. Preach. And really there's something wrong over there, but it's not you. Preach. Yeah. I try to get people to see that. And sometimes you are dealing with people, they are just that way. Yeah. Now, you can't change them, honey. Preach. Amen. But you can ask God to help you. Yes. That's the reason you pray without ceasing. Yes. You pray that God will help you deal with this. And he answers prayer. He'll help you deal with that. And as time goes on, you see it doesn't bother you like it used to bother you. That's right. They still acting crazy, but it's not bothering you like it used to. Amen. See, you need to call on love to help you out. Amen. Call on God who can help you out. Call on him and stop talking to your neighbors about it. They infuriate you more. Amen. They're the ones telling you, go get a stick to them. And all that old crazy stuff. Right. Do something back. Uh, if they did it to me, I know what I'd do. Yeah. Help us preach. Many a woman has lost her husband Help listening us. to that foolishness right there. If he did that to me, I'd, I'd tell you what I'd do. And you go out and act the net and do what she told you to do. Only next month to find out she got who you left. Yeah. Please, please. Ah, yes, sir. Listening to the enemy. Yep. Preach, preacher. Yep. Listening to the enemy. Read, my brother. I'm almost finished. Think of no evil. Think of no evil. It doesn't hold grudges. Preach. We need to get this one, y'all. Preach. It doesn't hold grudges. Yes. I told you this last night. Some of us are sick because we're eating old bread. Preach. God gives you a new loaf every day. Give us this day our daily bread. And you eating last month's bread. That's why you're sick, honey. You keep eating that old mess, you're going to stay sick. You can't change that stuff back there. Why are you, why, you just love punishment? You can't change any of it. You need to pray God to let you let it go. Some of us got too much baggage just dragging it around everywhere. You need to learn how to let some stuff go. You keep eating old bread, you're going to stay sick. He said, I give you a new loaf every day like I give you a new day. 
and you're still living back there in a hole that was nasty, ugly, and you hated every minute of it, and you still stuck back there. Praise. That's called torment. Praise. Praise. God said, I'm giving you a new day, and you're ignoring my loaves. I'm giving you fresh bread every day, and you're ignoring my loaves. You rather have that old decayed loaf. Can you get this picture? That's what holding the grudge is all about. That's the reason God tried to tell you. I'll handle those things. Vengeance is mine. I'll do the repay. You let it alone because you're going to get sick if you keep messing with this. God's trying to look out for you. And you still want to avenge yourself. And you're going to stay sick. And when you come to church, you're going to be angry. Can't nobody speak to you. Can't nobody get along with you. You sit in the back. You leave quick. You come late. I think they said that's meddling. I, I'm not meddling. I'm a Christian. I'm also a preacher of the word. God said let everything be done with decency and with order. And when the leadership sets out the order, the congregation is supposed to follow. That's called discipline. That's why I said the other night we ought to be called disciples rather than Christians. Because some of us got to learn what a Christian is. A disciple's a learner and a follower to learn how to do. I was never so excited when I was talking to a brother and, and he was uh, telling me about his congregation. He said, we need, I said, you need some elders and some deacons, some officers over there. And he said, well, these have to have these qualifications. I said, honey, all the, everybody's supposed to have them qualifications. The only difference in the elders and the deacons and the evangelists they're the big brothers or the big, uh, the older people, the more mature, that help you to carry out those characteristics that are actually everybody in the church's characteristics. It's like the big brother in the family who tells the other children how to do what mama and daddy want them to do. That's the only difference. They got to do it too. But don't make them a boss. And don't make them a god with an icon to it, tied to it, because they're not. Because Peter was told, he said, not to lord over, but to be an example, which is a servant doing what you want them to do. But all of them are supposed to be doing the same thing. Can I show y'all one more thing for a quick? One more, okay? Matthew chapter 7, I'm going to leave there. You stay with Ephesians. Okay. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Watch this right here, church, because this is dangerous. This is dangerous, church. Jesus said, many shall come, many shall come, many, many shall come, saying, saying what? Lord, Lord. Watch this. And have I not what does it say there, brother? I'll just let you read it. Many will say to me in that day. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 for everybody. Go ahead. 21. Yes. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. Not everyone. Here's why. Go ahead. Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. He that do what? But he that doeth the will. He that doeth what? The will. The will. Of my you, father, you've got which to is do heaven. something. That's the reason Jesus said, He that believeth in me, and the word there is in the active voice present tense. He that believeth in me, the works I do, he shall do also. Because I do the will of my father, and I do it always to please him. Now, I'm asking you to do it too. But if you don't, here's what we got to look at. Read on, my brother. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? That means I've been preaching in the pulpit. Prophets were preachers. They professed. Read out. And in thy name have cast out devils. Got rid of some bad habits for some people. Got them off dope. Got them off drugs. Got them out of uh, pornography and all those other horrible things. Got them, got them out of those addictions. Demon addictions. Go ahead. And in thy name done many wonderful works. I just done so much I don't even know where to start on my record. I just done been busy. I mean, I've been busy, boy. I've been on every committee in the church. I mean, I've been out there. But look what he said to him. Watch this. Watch this. Read. 
And then I will profess unto them. I'm going to profess. I never knew you. I don't even know who you are. You know why he doesn't know them? Do you know why he doesn't? I showed you last night. A new commandment I give unto you. In that you love one another as I have loved you. Watch this. Love one another as I have loved you. And by this, all men will know that you are my disciples. They'll know. And if they know you, I'll know you too. If you love. If you did all that professing and all that demon exercising and all that good work and you were doing it just to glorify you. That's right. You were selfish with it. You just waving your banner, not God's. Yeah. Look at me and what I do. Watch. At the end he said, many wonderful words. He's bragging. <laughs> he didn't say brag. He said love. That's the reason straight is the gate. Nerve is the way. Because all of us ain't going to get this. That's right. Some of y'all going to be mad for tomorrow. <laughs> And forget everything you heard tonight. Because the devil works to take it out of your heart as quick as God puts it in there. That's what he gave with the parable of the sower. When he said the, the bird comes by and takes the word out of the heart before it gets a chance to grow and mature and come forth in an action or a behavior. He takes it. Some of us will lose this. God told us this. That's the way we're made. He knows us. You have to do this with a concerted effort. You have to want this. You have to make this happen for you. You have to become a living sacrifice. That ain't no joke. That's tough. Laying yourself on the altar. That's tough. That is more than a notion. That's tough. When people are tearing you down and you're reaching out with kindness, that's tough. When they're hurting your family and you still got to serve them with love and understand it, that's tough. You see what we're saying? This is no easy matter because the enemy going to keep you all fired up. They're making a fool out of you. Yes, sir. You know they are. How much longer are you going to put up with this? Yeah. How much longer? You know how you look in front of your friends? Right. How much longer are you going to take this? You better go down there and take this into your hands. They're going to get worse. Yes. You're teaching them how to treat you. The devil will talk to you. Yeah. I don't guess you ever had one of these conversations, right? Maybe he was talking to you about something else, but he was talking to you. He'll talk to you. He'll talk to you. He'll talk to you all through church. When you should be listening to the sermon, you're texting somebody over there saying, I don't like this sermon. And critiquing his language. Preach. Did he say right now? Did he say right now? Help us. Help us. Doing Help that in the Zion. Help us. Help us. Help us. We need to repent. <laughs> it's serious, church. The devil can get you that quick. He caught Peter after Peter just got through saying, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the true and living God. He, he, I don't even, they didn't even get out of the chapter. They didn't even get out of the chapter, Halo, and here he is rebuking Christ, saying this is not going to happen. And Jesus turned and looked right at him and said, Satan, because he recognized who was there. Get behind me. It wasn't Peter. It was Satan. You need to get that too, because sometimes Satan's in people all around you, but you focused on them. Now, here's where it gets really rugged. Love the sinner and hate the sin. Now, that's a word, but it's, it, application's not easy here. Love the sinner 
but hate the sin. Now you say, well, you got to wait till somebody see it. No, because all of us are saints with sinner problems. You still got problem with sin. Don't dare say you ain't. All of us got problem with sin. Preachers have problem with sins. Elders have problem with sins. Their wives have problem with sin. Their children have problem with sin. You have problem with sins. I have problems with sin, and the devil knows every one of our addresses, and he knows all of our frequencies. He knows what's meaningful to you. He knows what you're weak to, and he plays on that, and he'll have you doing foolish things. Before you know it, you've done something stupid that you don't even believe you did. I don't care how smart, how poised, how pious you are, Satan got your frequency. It's like a dog whistle. Can't nobody else hear it, but you do. You hear your frequency. When a dog whistles blow, I don't hear nothing, but the dogs get all excited. They bob, they move, they come. But I don't hear nothing. But when Satan wants you, he got your frequency and he calls you. He blows on your whistle. Has he called you today? He don't quit. The enemy don't sleep, he don't eat. He just seeks to deceive. Because the Bible says he know he doesn't have but a short time to do it. The revelation is clear on that. He knows he only has a short time to take us to a devil's hell if we become willing participants. Next time he tells you something, look in the book and see if God said that's okay. Learn how to go to the word and see what the word said about what you're about to do. If God said don't do it, don't do it. Why? Because love is involved if God's involved. God won't let you talk about nobody and hurt nobody because love don't do that. Love won't let you backstab nobody because love don't do that. Love won't keep you holding grudges against people and don't speak to them no more indefinitely. Love don't do that. Love doesn't envy people because God blessed them. Love don't do that. Love ain't arrogant and act like it's the only one there and everybody else is less than suffering from narcissism. Nobody's here but me. Love don't do that. And he said, love one another as I love you. And if you think about how you've been, you've done some things. I don't even know you. I don't know you. But God does. And you've done some things. See, here's what it is. You want to judge me for 15 minutes worth a mess up. God got you all the way back to your six-year-old. You see? You do know that, don't you? He got you when you was in high school. You know what you're doing then. He got you in there. Don't you know that? You only got me for 15 minutes. And you mad at me and won't speak to me for three months. Because of 15 minutes. And God's got you since you were 25 years old, and you know what you're doing then. Because you thought you were grown. Are you with me? And God was dealing with you then. And he let you live. But you want to kill me for 15 minutes. And then only that, you're going to get some other people to gang me. Like a gang mentality thing. Ain't enough for me to just hurt you, my brother. Let me go get some of my roadies and let all of us chew on a piece of you. Am I working this? Yes. This is everywhere I've been in this country. God's blessed me to travel just a tad. This ain't unique to no one place. So don't say somebody fed me something. God teaches and I share. That's what I do. If the Lord lets me get back to Lebanon, they'll have to put up with me again. I was in Murfreesboro three years. They had to learn to put up with me there. I was in Gallatin. Now I'm in Lebanon. I don't know where he's going to take me next, but I just know where I go, it's going to be there when I get there. Because there ain't but three things y'all are working with. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And you've been working with it ever since you figured out you could do something.
Ever since you became able to make a decision, you're no longer innocent. Because you know better. Mama told you not to do it and you did it anyway. You're no longer innocent. And God loved you in spite of you doing that. Even when you set the garage on fire, God loved you. Yes, he did. Burned down the whole house. God loved you anyway. And your parents did too, didn't they? Because you they child. God has loved us all. But yet one or two of us can really get into it with each other. And that's what is meant in 1 Corinthians 5, that a little leavening will level, leaven the whole lump. A little bit of mess will mess up the whole church. You have to guard against that with the spirit of love because love will break all that stuff down. It will. Y'all need to learn how to love. Because you're not going to make it to heaven if you don't. I told you that. You got baptized and you still not being loving. You're just like the one that said, I prophesied. I've done the demon casting out. I've done many wondrous works. And he said, I don't even know who you are. Because if you don't love, you're just making noise. Even your amens is racket. That's the reason I said, don't be saying amen if it's for somebody else. Say it when it's for you. <clears throat> I've said enough. I've said enough. I've said enough. I've said enough. I, I've, I've, I've said enough. I just hope you all see what Messiah did that night in the garden. He went all the way back to the garden to address the enemy. And he addressed the enemy. And he addressed him because you and I can't beat this enemy by ourselves. When Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing, he means it. I can't love you without him. I can't do it. I'm not going to tell you that I can. Naturally, I cannot love you the way he tells me to love you without him. I got to have him to do this. And you do too. The sooner we get to that and accept that, the sooner we'll be on our way to growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But I can't do this without him, and you can't either. I can't love people that hate me without him helping me. I just can't do it. It's not in me, Donald. It's not in me. If it's not him that helps me to do it, it won't get done. I can't do it. I'm just admitting the truth. <laughs> I have to have his help. When he said, without me, you can do nothing, that covers a lot of territory. And loving folk is the biggest one for me. Loving folk that are unlovable is a hard task. Jesus was so in love with us, he went to the cross to serve his father's will because his father did not want us lost. The cross is what you need to keep your eyes on when somebody gets you mad. You go back to that cross. They're not treating me fair. What was fair about the cross? It's an innocent man. He is not guilty of anything except loving you. If that's his only wrong, that's it. That's what they hung him up there for. That's what they killed him for. For loving you. For loving me. And loving his father. Don't let the devil win. Not in your court. Not on your watch. Don't let the devil win. You have too much going here in this time. You are special people. God calls you peculiar. You are a special people to God. He wants you to stay special. The devil wants to ruin you. His whole ambition is to make you look like Jesus looked hanging on that cross. Unrecognizable because of the brutality he had experienced just for loving you and me and doing good. That's all he did. That's all he did wrong, if that's wrong, and that was loving you and me. That's what he did. And he asked us to do the same with each other. I don't know about you. I know that's tough, but that's why it's called a cross. He said, take up your cross and follow me. And then Luke said it this way, daily. 
Every day, church. You got to love somebody every day. That makes you above average people. Not average, but above average. See, God is building himself a people that where they are seen, they're called by his name by people who see them. They don't have to call themselves that. People will know by their love. Don't we sing a song like that? We will know with us by our love or something? We do sing that, right? Well, some of y'all sing it. It's a song. It's a song. They shall know us by our love. It's a verse in a song or something. It's a wonderful song. They shall know us by our love. That's what we want to be known for. Anything else is going to be beneath your privileges. And you'll be putting God somewhere that he doesn't belong. Stop looking for icons and look for Jesus. Just look for Jesus. Jesus.